So we are here at BattleBots with the legend himself, Mark Sikrakian. Hello. Everyone who's seen the 90 series knows Mechadon. It was practically the poster bot for BattleBots. It was. And he is now here with his new robot called, what you call this? Stalker. Stalker. Wow. <laughs> wow, this really does feel like a futuristic Mechadon. I mean, it's kind of the anti-Mechadon in a lot of ways. Um, Mechadon was designed to be almost a weapon unto itself. This is a little different. This is a platform, and I'm planning on just really exploring what's possible with this thing. But beyond that, um, it's really been an exercise in figuring out the software, figuring out um, how to coordinate all this motion, and also thinking about really restarting the conversation about walking robots and battle bots. So Mark, what made you fall in love with battle bots? Oh, well, I was around when battle bots was conceived and I had been competing in robot wars in San Francisco and I was the, uh, I'm, I'm the former heavyweight champion of robot wars and when robot wars basically um, became defunct in the US, uh, Trey and Greg announced that they were going to create BattleBots. And I had an idea for a robot for BattleBots, which was Mechadon. And so my first BattleBot was a walking robot. Oh my and God. Was, um, <laughs> it was really, I was trying to push BattleBots in a, a different direction or a direction that was um, more than what we had been seeing at Robot Wars. And so it wasn't 100% successful. It was a terrible fighter. It didn't really win any matches. But it, it, it looked great, and a lot of people really loved it. Um, what, what should they be? This, this robot, I call it a small-scale prototype. It weighs 77 pounds. Um, Mechadon weighed almost 500 pounds. And I really don't want to make 500-pound robots anymore. Um, I feel like there's a sweet spot for walking robots. When you get up into the 500-pound range, they start to become very ponderous, and I would really much rather have um, these live, mobile, maneuverable robots. And I feel like 250 is pretty good for that. But then the question is, how do you make it so that the, either do you have a class for walking robots? And to have that, you have to have a lot of people making robots that are walking. Or do you have them go up against regular battle bots? And if that's the case, what do you do rules-wise to make it rewarding or tactically advantageous to have a walking machine? So Mark, what is your background to allow you to create these amazing robots? Um, I've been a creature creator since I was a teenager, so my first real job was working at the ILM Creature Shop up in San Rafael uh, in the mid-80s. That's Industrial um, Light and Magic, That's Industrial right? Light and Magic. So I got a job at Industrial Light and Magic when I was 19, and I started learning on the job. Um, I don't really have any formal engineering or uh, mechanical training, but I learned a lot right there with uh, all these other really creative people at ILM to start with. And then shortly after that, I moved to Los Angeles and I began working for Rick Baker in LA. Uh, Rick Baker is a multi-academy award winning makeup effects uh, artist. And the thing about working at Rick's was that he was really always all about quality. So we had, um, there was an emphasis on doing the best work possible, which always resonated with me. And in that environment, I really developed a lot of mechanical chops, um, doing mechanisms for creature animatronics. About 10 years ago, I started writing my own control systems and using a, a music software language called Max, which is a node-based um, general purpose uh, language, but very high level. And it's intended for music, it's intended for uh, performances uh, that flow and my hobby is electronic music so I was using it for music and as I was as I was using it I was like you know, I could probably write a pretty good control system with this so I started experimenting with controlling servos from Max and that was the beginning of writing motion control systems and it changed everything about the way I design robots and mechanisms so instead of coming up with a, a really clever mechanism to solve a particular kinematic problem I would now dissolve I design simple mechanisms and 
partnered them with Software Control and solved the problems that way. So Mechadon, which was created in 1999, the, the walking gate is really built into the mechanism itself. It does a few very simple physical motions and the walking gate comes from that. Um, I'm basically puppeteering it. It's exhausting to control it, but it boils down to a simple two, two joystick system. So using those two sticks, I could control Mechadon and I could walk it around and make it do the Death Blossom and the Slam and all that stuff that it does. But it's very limited in what it can do. And so Stalker is specifically an exploration of making something that mechanically is very simple, but through software, through control, has a lot of capability. Uh, how far could I go with that? It's radially symmetrical, so it can walk in any direction. It's also symmetrical through its ground plane, so if you flip it over, it's identical, mechanically identical. So I can flip the legs and have them move in the opposite direction. Should there be parts of the box that are inaccessible to robots that are not walking, for example? Or what? I, I don't really know what the answer is. Um, I feel like everyone has an idea about how to pursue walking robots or battle bots, and this is this is the conversation start. I want to hear people's ideas. I want people's ideas to, to you know, come into BattleBots and, and uh, give us a framework for making walking robots of BattleBots. That's incredible. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for sharing with us, Mark. Mark, Mark.